NASA's Orion spacecraft flew just 81 miles above the moon today while sending back live pictures of the Earth and the lunar surface. The vessel launched from Florida last Wednesday, and while no astronauts were on board this one, the Artemis mission is seen as a giant leap for NASA as it gets ready to once again put a man or a woman, perhaps, on the moon in 2025. Joining us now is Neil deGrasse Tyson, renowned astrophysicist, author, and so many things. His most recent book is Starry Messenger, Cosmic Perspectives on Civilization. We welcome you tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having me. So let's first start with Artemis. This is, as I understand it, a very big deal. It's been 50 years. You know, so, so I guess that counts as a big, <laughs> as a big deal. You know. <laughs> what took so long? Well, all right, we stopped going to the moon when we realized, you know, people, we remember our cleansed memory of that Apollo era is we're explorers, we're Americans, we're, we, we go into space. Yes. But, but behind the curtains there, we were scared witless because Russia had been into space first and they looked like they were beating us in every important way. And so we said, what can we do to make a statement, to make a splash, Stop. no pun it. <laughs> and that was, let's say we're gonna go to the moon yeah. instead of just putting in a satellite or a person or a space station or whatever else. So. We did that, and then we found out they're not going to the moon. So then we stopped. Yeah. So let's be honest with ourselves about what motivates us, okay? So it's been 50 years. So what's happened over those 50? We could have maybe done this 10 years ago, 20 years ago, but China has risen up mm, in their right. space uh, uh, exploits. And so it's like, oh, okay, well, maybe that's an excuse to redouble our efforts, and that's what we're doing now. What's interesting is after 50 years, the, the moon is still the thing. The moon is still enticing. Well, I still... I, I want to go to Mars. Yeah. Okay. Well, isn't that, I guess that's the whole, that's the whole point of Artemis, to to right? Yeah. It's, it's well, to it, get to the moon and then get to Mars. We got to remember how to get to the moon, all right, and or what that takes. But it's, these are very different distances. It takes three days to get to the moon and half a year to nine months to get to Mars. For, to put this in context, uh, if Earth were a schoolroom globe, the moon would be in the next room, 30 feet away. Mars would be a mile away. Oh, got it. So okay. this is not just let's go a little further. You know, it's 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 a big deal to make that leap. But it's nice to have activity in space again to remind ourselves how to do it and how to protect our astronauts and how to do everything necessary to sustain uh, 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 life. And because we want to set up shop up in on the moon. Do you foresee that truly being a reality? I. I we have to be motivated, and I, well, this looks like motivation. No, today. no it's good. Well, it's good. Today. Everybody was totally into it. Yes, yeah. yes. But we have to maintain that drive through. By the way, the the time scale to get to Mars is longer than presidential election time scales. So you <laughs> and that's long. <laughs> so you need a commitment yeah. that survives fluck, in ebbs and flows in political leanings, and I, that's hard when you know congress swaps out every two years and you know it's a uh, it's a, it's it's a challenge as perhaps as much of a challenge as space exploration itself so what needs to happen do more of the american people need to follow along more closely because we get excited about these missions and then we sort of forget about yeah it. so what's going to happen on the 30th mission right. all right is that are you going to even cover it in the news oh. right so this is will that. you come back to the 30th mission <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but right now uh, this one was uncrewed all right not c-r-u-d-e but c-r-e-w-e-d mm -hmm. crewed right. they're, they're not called unmanned anymore there's a, one of the early woke uh, <laughs> things NASA did. So uh, this Artemis One is uncrewed, and it's there for you know two, three weeks testing out everything, and then it comes back and it's going to splash down in the Pacific. The Artemis Two will have a crew that will go to the moon and come back, but not land. I want to test that with people. Mm. The third one will go and land. So before we let you go, I have to ask you. I said to you. I, I don't know if you know that you're something of a parenting expert on the internet. No, I, 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 not, I didn't know. Well, I, you, you have this famous speech that a lot of parents have heard about letting your child jump into puddles. Yes. To maintain the sense of curiosity that comes that clearly every parent breaks their child up at some point. <laughs> yes. <laughs> look, look at how much effort parents invest in preventing their children from exploring their environment and jumping into puddles is one of them. Let them do it. It's an experiment in cratering. It's also a load of laundry for yes. mama. <laughs> And I told you, I saw a puddle recently, and I said, what would Neil deGrasse Tyson do? He would let you jump in the puddle. I, I totally do that. <laughs> and you didn't have kids to not have to work hard, right? Oh, this is right. Just, ain't that the truth. Just accept <laughs> yeah. the package and run with it. 
Dr. Yeah. Tyson, thank you for being with thank us tonight. You. We appreciate it. Mm -hmm. You're coming back for at least the 30th. The 30th. Call me. I'll, be, I'll put it on the calendar. You got it. All right.